Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher. So we're looking at section 1.2 and we're gonna be doing question number five. So this one, let's get started. A baseball player throws a ball straight up and then catches it 2.4 seconds later at the same height from which he threw it. And they want us to determine the initial velocity and the maximum height of the ball. So as usual, the first thing we wanna do, we want to first visualize the question. So let's draw a baseball. And here we have a baseball player and they're throwing the ball straight upwards. So we can draw the trajectory, the path of the ball going straight up. And then he catches this 2.4 seconds later. So it comes back down. So this whole time interval of it going up and coming back down to the place that he launched it from, it takes a time interval of 2.4 seconds. And in this case, we're not given the initial velocity, so the initial velocity is going to be our unknown. So V initial is our unknown. And the second thing they want to know is what is the maximum height? So that's going to be our unknown as well. Delta D. And for the maximum height, we can call it capital letter H. Sometimes that's more convenient. So the maximum height at the top. Now, this kind of questions are tricky because they're telling you to find the maximum height, but they're not saying that it has to be from the ground level. So what you can do, you can just assume it from the place that you know. So it's the maximum height from which it was launched, so from where the hand was throwing the ball. That's the tricky part, so because we don't know how high off the ground the ball was initially. So when they say the maximum height, you could say the maximum height from the place it was thrown from. Now let's try to solve this question. And what we're going to be doing is since because since the motion is in the y direction, vertical displacement in other words, the entire time the acceleration is going to be due to gravity. So they don't tell you this in the question, but you have to assume that since you're on the planet Earth, you have to assume that the acceleration is downwards and is due to gravity, which you should approximate it to be roughly 9.8 meters per second square. And down direction. Okay, so if it takes 2.4 seconds for it to go up and to it come back down, you can take advantage of symmetry. So remember, whenever the object's in the air, it's a parabola. So you could take advantage of symmetry. So if it takes 2.4 seconds for it to go up and down, how much time does it take to reach the top? Well, due to symmetry, it will be half the time. So think of that parabola, right? So this means to reach the top, it will be half the time of the total. So 1.2 seconds. Great. So the other piece of information that we know, and this didn't tell us in the question, so it's kind of the things you have to know in physics. When you're dealing with vertical motion, you always have to assume it's acceleration to gravity. And whenever an object reaches a maximum height, it is going to be momentarily at rest. So the object's velocity, if it's momentarily at rest, it's going to be zero. So you can say V final or V top, maybe that'd be better. It's going to be zero. So again, it is going to be momentarily at rest before it comes back down. Now, all we have to do is just use the kinematic equations of motion. So just refer to your formula sheet. 
uh, I usually work with the main three. So let me write down the main three, then I'll choose which one I'm gonna use. So if you don't know which are the main three, you might wanna check out my videos from grade 11. So let me write them down. And although these are the equation in scalar form, we have to remember that we're dealing with vector quantities, so you do have to put the arrowheads because these you have to consider whether it's pointing up or down and we're going to give them a negative value or a positive value depending on that. So this means we need to find a convention. Not fine, we're going to assume a convention. We're going to assume if the vector points up, that's the positive direction. Now, what we can do, we can look at the variables that were given and then substitute into the equation that we can use. So let's label our equations one, two, three, and let's solve question A now. Okay, so we want to find the initial velocity, so you might want to look for a formula that has the initial velocity, but that's actually all three of them. Okay, and the only thing that we know for it to reach the maximum height, or the whole trip, we know the time. And because we're dealing with vertical motion, we also know the acceleration, which is due to gravity. So you see, in this case, you can use um, which equation? Oh, we know the final velocity, so we, we know this one here. So we can use equation number two, because from two, again, we know the initial velocity. No, that's what we're trying to find. That's our unknown. We know the acceleration, we know the change in time, and we know at the maximum height, the velocity is going to be zero. So we can use equation number two. So rewrite it in the vector form, because again, we still need to indicate the direction as positive or negative, depending on the direction that the vector points. At the maximum height, the velocity is zero, the acceleration is due to gravity, and it points down, so it's negative g. So let's put this in, v initial, minus g delta t to the top. Isolate for v initial. So it's going to be 9.8 meters per second square times 1.2 seconds. Now keep in mind that if you did do this question differently and still get the right answer, it's still correct because maybe you didn't take advantage that it takes half the time to reach the top. That's still correct, just make sure you have the right value as I do. So that's approximately 12 meters per second. And here, positive was up, or we can rewrite this as V initial, 12 meters per second, up. Okay, so that one wasn't so bad. Uh, let's go see what part B was asking us to do and let's finish this question up. For part B, uh, they want us to find the maximum height of the ball. So that's what we call H, the maximum height, which we labeled before, remember? So we're gonna go back to our formulas and then we're gonna see which one we're gonna pick. Uh, let's use a different color. Now we're looking for displacement. All right, because maximum height is the displacement, so we're either gonna use equation one or equation three. And now we actually know the initial velocity. We have acceleration and the time. Likewise, we could have the final velocity. So actually, you see in this case, we can use either equation number one or equation number three, and both of them will give us the right answer. So I think I'm going to use equation number three, but I challenge you to use equation number one and see if we get the same answer, okay? So again, I'm gonna use equation three, you use equation one. So leave a comment if you got the same answer as me, okay? And we're just gonna put in what we know. 
Uh, remember, at the maximum height, it's momentarily at rest, so that's zero. The acceleration is due to gravity, it points down, so we put negative g. The displacement was pointing up, so it's positive, and we called it h. And the initial velocity, we found it before, it was 12 meters per second. It was pointing up, so we take it as positive. And let's simplify. Now, one mistake a lot of students make is with the negative sign and taking the square of the values. So whatever the value for velocity is, make sure you put it in brackets. That's going to avoid any algebraic problems that you're going to get into. So try to put it in brackets when you substitute it in, the value of it. So now let's continue to simplify. The negative on both sides will cancel out. So 12 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. That's going to be our maximum height. And we get approximately, what is this, 7.1 or 7.3, depending how you rounded it off. So in this case, 7.3. If I didn't run my initial velocity before and I kept it as 11.76, then you get approximately 7.1. So both are going to be correct. Um, just depends on how accurate uh, your teacher wants it to be. I would have taken both of them to be correct. And that's how we solve this question. So stick around and then I'm going to show you how to do the other ones which are more challenging. So make sure that you hit subscribe and you see the playlist. To